Oh, wow, look at them all. Big, big assortment out here of all the something for everybody auctions. This is probably the most something of something for everyone of everyone's. 46 Chevy truck, 41 to 6. Very, very little differences on these in the various years. I think something about the door locks guys were saying so this one they've put on a s10 frame and used pretty much the original sheet metal i believe those are big truck front fenders they got a huge wheel arch to them obviously reproduction galvanized bed Kind of curious what they did to use that steering column. Oh, it's got the uh, Bluetooth steering. Unfinished project. We've got the 1928-29 Model A Roadster pickup. Older restoration. Pretty attractive colors. Got the black with the goldenrod wheels. Pretty simple machines. Set up to run. Relic of another time. Got the visible gas pump. Really no breeze out here today, but they staked her down anyway. Safe than sorry. This is a Wayne. 615 good original patina add your globe 57 decent looking car but more of what you'd call probably a Refurbishment or rattle can restoration. Center bolt 350. By golly, they kept her going. Just upholstery shop vinyl. Four-door hardtops, pretty desirable body style. Looks like she started life different colors. It'd be super hard to see that data plate behind the stuff there. Paint is 822D. Trim 670. Kind of see it there instead of looking at my hand. Got the gold V on the hood. The grill was gold. It's kind of golden overspray now. 
66 Coronado, front wheel drive car. This was really, yep, she's locked up. Really one of the only times they truly had a flat floor. After that they put the exhaust down the center. They wanted people to still have a center hump regardless of the drivetrain. A lot of engineering went into these. It's kind of cool with the bench seat. Just a standard model. Olds Tornado. This Jeep's got some cool period mods. I'm not really a modified guy, but this is all the accessories. Actually, a whole fiberglass body. Got the vintage Goodyear Terra tires, KC Daylighters. Competition steering wheel. All that and a stock gauge cluster. <laughs> Kind of crazy. I'm not a modified guy, but this thing's got a cool vibe to it. It's kind of a relic of all these old four wheel drive shops. California built. It's a cool rig. Got the old 67 or 68, kind of hard to tell. Big back window is either 67 custom cab or a... Sure enough. Bob works that one, didn't he? He liked his old motors. Kind of an old, old school mechanic. Factory AC truck. It is short bed step side. Kind of a refurbished, modified type of truck. This thing's cool, 60. No, it'd be 71, 72. This is a three quarter ton frame. Got a bit of a weird gap in the cabin bed, like some kind of monkey business going on. <laughs> Does have the stock four wheel emblems. Power brakes, no AC. It's a desirable truck, even though it's green. Wasn't on the road too terribly long ago. Got the gold. GMC. I'm not real up on the years of these because honestly they didn't change them much. That's your pretty standard V8 drivetrain. 
This thing's getting a good share of cowl rust in it. It's never been my favorite generation of trucks. They just rust in weird places and they've always kind of been collectible from way back and so it seems like the good ones have all been bought up before my generation. It is a really cool interior with the Paisley door panels. One ton. Kind of be a rough riding truck empty. Another one ton. This one's green with the flatbed with the sides. Two tones not bad on there. AC truck, V8, power brake, pretty well optioned. This thing's really solid. Pretty much expect bad rocker panels in Kansas. I guess it needs a good bit of floor work too, but pretty honest, unmolested truck, really. Not gonna find one. Hasn't been worked that won't need some rust repair. 69.70, one ton with the dump bed. It's got a neat old red color to it. V8 power brake, no AC. Automatic truck. Looking pretty solid. This thing's very, very red. Very red truck. The old conversion van with the high top. I remember riding around in these in my childhood. This one's got the lowered floor, so wheelchair accessible. Cost somebody a lot of money back in the day. Then we got the Chevy. Half ton four wheel drive long bed. That's a sharp looking truck. These have really been gaining collector value. Honestly, 30 year old truck like that that's survived, it's gonna be coming on regardless of brand stick shift 192k some of these dashes had weak plastic and then others are fine I've parted a bunch of these and gotten dashes they seem to sell pretty good on eBay I just not real motivated to ship them Really attractive color combination. Obviously been used, but not torn up and abused. All-star bed liner, I believe. GM factory accessories, you could get one that was called Dura Liner, I think is the name. Super sharp track, all stock except 
late model wheels. Some more 57 hard tops. It's two door. I believe that color is onyx black. Red interior, white top. Pretty neat looking car. Back in the day, if you broke your grill bar, you could buy this patch piece to go over it. Kind of a chrome band aid. red one with the white top I mean they're rough all around need total restoration but a lot of this stuff's available out of the catalog so beyond that it just really takes money and dedication Fifty seven Chevy's pretty iconic collector car. Two two door hard tops and then got the four door hard top. That one's got the data tag down on the center of the cowl. Fifty seven four door post, another post, if a four door gets very much rust in it they're really just parts cars. If you get a nice four door post it's actually easier to convert it to a two door post than it is to fix a rusty two door. But these things just kind of, kind of parts cars at this point. 49 Plymouth. It's got those ribbed bumpers that all the customizer guys like. When my dad was a kid in the 50s, they had a 49 Plymouth and drove it between Virginia and Kansas on family trips. Rambler Marlin, 65 or 6. Interesting car. Obviously competitor to the Mustang Fastback and Barracuda. old Ford I should have shown it from the other side for dramatic effect but she's laid on her side for a while somebody probably went to a lot of work to rescue that thing out of some ditch or ravine hey, somewhere just memories and yard art now. About it. Not even a deck lid on there. Old 40s Ford cab. 47 to 53 Chevy. Strictly parts. Cab's rusty and Roof's been pounded in. I got a lot of these trucks, so I've been looking, trying to find enough parts to piece them together, but really at this point, I'm just down to cabs, and this one's not quite usable for what I need it for. I 
and we got the 55. Pretty rusty cab. That stuff's fixable, but not the easiest job in the world. Rather interesting floor patch down in the bottom. Guessing like Exide batteries or Firestone maybe. But pull it off and see the picture. Uh, velvet. Velvet pipe tobacco. It's kind of cool. All the porcelain signs in the world can't rehab this old pile. She's rough. Sixty four, five, or six Chevy. Another sixty four, five, six. This thing's got a good look to it. A good patina, but rusted, rusted. This thing would be cool yard art too. It's got a good, good old weather down look to it. All matching color. Throw that thing out at your pumpkin patch or wherever. Three on the tree. All stuck down to the hubcaps. Just the way God and General Motors intended it to be. GMC Suburban. This is a 60 through 63 with the knee knocker windshield. Desirable custom cab trim. Any of these old trucks you're gonna have good share of rust repair required. It's inaccessible at the moment. This thing's desirable because it's got the clamshell gate. A lot of hard patina on this one. Bondo and rot. Floor's completely gone. This thing would be labor of love. One like this, it really takes either a hobbyist or retired person. This isn't one you can exactly fix and flip and make anything on. So the clamshell gate, you could only get on the windowed Suburbans and carryalls. They built these either way with the doors or the gates, but the Gate's a little more desirable because they were only on the window version. Your panels would just have the barn doors. And then you've got your Jeep. It's got a 70s playing in the sand vibe to it with the goofy wing on the top. Obviously started life as a male Jeep because it's right-hand drive and somebody Kind of whacked it and rebuilt it I'm guessing a 17 year old kid with a welder and some ambition We were all that 17 year old kid at some point weren't we Here's the stock male Jeep Somebody's added the 
clandestine Dale Jr. livery to the sides of that one. We got the CJ something. I'm not the Jeep expert, so I'm not going to guess, but it's one of the more stock Jeeps on the place, except for the paint job. And we got the old trenching Jeep. Spotted one of these on a Western Kansas auction way back in the day that was home built. This one looks like it's actually some kind of a factory built aftermarket. It's kind of a cool piece. Definitely some collector interest to it. Then we'll catch the Endro here. We got the Buick Century with the matching Oldsmobile rallies. I've had a few of these. Believe it or not, man, they're coming on for collector value. Let's see what kind of engine we got in there. 2.5 EFI as the mailbox letters spell out. Called this the Iron Duke, the Tech 4, colloquially nicknamed the Low Tech 4. Sometimes Low Tech is good. Definitely avoid the headaches of complicated stuff. And we got the Pontiac Grand Am with the Tech 4 badging on it. Guess these are all kind of locked up. Chevy truck, base model. This one looks like a V6, 2000 model year. That'd be a good, durable, reliable commuter vehicle. He could haul stuff on the weekends. And we have got the Pittman crane truck. Great 1960s industrial design masterpiece with its wind cheating design. That, I believe, is a Chrysler Industrial 6. They use these in combines and forklifts and industrial trucks like this and Chrysler's said they built a shed with this in the 90s and then that was about the last they used it but this guy was pretty good about keeping stuff maintained and functional Pittman Hydrolift. This is a cool old rig, really. Got the little maker's badge there. I mean, I'm sure the brake pedal probably goes to the floor. Yep, guaranteed. Cool old hour meter. Ross cam and lever steering. Pretty neat rig.
got a lot of 73 to 80 Chevy truck cabs. Probably a 81 and later in the mix. Some beds. Then we got a few parts chassis and parts trucks. This is a short bed, I think. Looks like it anyway. And then we got the four door. All these four doors are long beds. Rusty, rusty. Ten worms of Definitely munched on this one. Just a crusty old beat down parts truck at this point. 73 or 4. This truck reminds me a lot of my next door neighbors. He drove it till the transmission went out and then sold it to me for junk and I scrapped it feel a little bad about it now because it was a good 350 in there but I wasn't working on stuff really at the time and when they're in this condition it's kind of like what do you do with them you know this one they've parted on pretty good taking a bunch of the interior stuff out taking the AC and mechanical stuff but I always thought it'd be cool to take something like this that's just totally beat down and just put it on the road just to get looks but I'm not that kind of channel a lot of other guys are doing it so it's all right. Got an AC truck here, 69 or 70 probably, 69, 70 still would be six lug drum brake. Another old parts truck and another one too, this old cottonwood green color. Patina's down to silver, but it's actually green originally. They put this car color on the cars, the station wagons, the trucks. Cottonwood green was like the subtle, if you're not quite ready to go full on avocado. Old blue solid color truck. This one's actually got the bucket seats in it. A little bit of money there. Disc brakes, good parts truck. Is that crane cable operated then? Yeah. Yeah. And then the boom is hydraulic just on one piston? Yeah. Have you guys used it much? Or? We ran it up and down. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, about a 50 by 100 building over there. He built the whole building. With okay. It. Wow.
the guy that owned this, he did mechanical work and these vehicles that are out here, a lot of them they're his private collection, stuff he restored for himself or just never made it to his projects. But he had a lot of extra parts around, mostly mechanical stuff. There's a whole row of engines. Tons and tons of stuff on this sale. Some of these old mechanical parts, you've got to look at the part numbers on them. They look like greasy junk, but if somebody's building a vehicle that's specific to a certain era, certain date codes they want to have right before the actual production date of the car. He collected a lot of 57 Chevy parts. See the two two-door hardtops there he just never got around to restoring. There's been a lot of interest in those cars, really in everything. He never sold anything. He just kept it for his collection and people would always ask, but he just never let go of anything so this is the day to buy it more tri-5 chevy parts i haven't even shown all the parts yet that are here so probably to keep this from getting too ridiculously long i'm gonna end up uh, breaking this down into two videos so show you this first walk around of everything that's here and then do the actual sale selling the vehicles and the part two and be sure to come back for that one i'll show you what i end up buying sale hasn't started yet so don't know yet what that'll be so I'm kind of excited to see who shows up and what i'll be taking home couple Oldsmobile engines you really like these Olds motors they never did a big block and a small block same as Pontiac never did got a Model A engine early style 1928 and this is I think they call a mutt one of those early Jeeps 50s or 60s maybe Another old Model A engine. Then third one here is the Industrial. They call these the Star Block. People kind of look for them because they have a bit of a easier life. Being in an industrial application, they run at steady RPMs. So three old Model A engines for choosing there. Then a uh, 300 Ford 6 venerable old engines use these in other industrial applications beyond the trucks 258 Jeep six cylinder and we've got the assortment of Chevy V8 blocks and core engines AMC V8 there Bigger displacement AMC V8s are pretty desirable. 327 Jeep engine. This is nothing in common with the Chevy 327. Just the displacement is all. 
And there's a period dress Chevy 327 here. Got the cool old fend covers. Mid 60s 283 with the aluminum power glide. He saved every one of these old Chevy blocks for potential to use on some future project and they just kind of sat here waiting some of these might be scrapped some of them people might buy for using a few motorcycles in the collection too this one on the end here is a sears allstate which is actually uh, austrian hook and these were built over in Austria and then they were imported here to the US and sold by Sears some of them were sold in a crate and then you'd put them together it's kind of an interesting piece of global manufacturing history and you see the badge Steyr Daimler Puck this one's probably mid 60s maybe 66 or so just kind of an interesting artifact of global manufacturing history and global transportation history last plate 75 somebody's kind of been playful there and painted that seven into a nine <laughs> kind of weird that's actually 75 plate with the green and white sure all of these probably ran when they were parked but need to have some tinkering and maintenance to get them back on the highway again Sonda's a 750 cc four-cylinder you see it's been preserved in Excellent, excellent condition. You interested in that? I'm just filming for YouTube. That's a really sharp bike. My uncle had a CB360, and I've had bikes, but I'm 140 pounds, and so I can't really <laughs> control one, so I never really. And I didn't like shifting with my feet either. I just never was into Here's it. The, uh, like the tag. Right, yeah. The, the 72 is kind of early. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, somebody so like. It's one of the last, the later 72s. Yeah. Somebody really took good care of it. It's only got. Tag, it says 1982, so that was the last year it was dead. Yeah. 14,000 miles. So they rode it around. Remember, preserve nature, don't splatter yourself all over it. Another 754 next to it. Does have the original assembly line headlight bulbs on them? It's 10 of 73, so it's probably 74. Very well preserved bikes. Honda 350R. These others, I don't know anything about them. Kawasaki two cylinder chain drive. LTD 440. That one's been wrecked and skidded and repair parts. 
and then a couple parts rigs. Goldwing GL 1100, I think was the early one. Parts and pieces, pieces and parts. A little more of the parts and signs. License plate collection. There's kind of some old ones in here. 60s, 70s, kind of the era of the trucks that he was into. Never seen a rig plate. It's kind of cool. Quite a variety in here. Came from far and wide. Old Chevy truck parts. 60s, 70s. Some of these grills are pretty pricey new. I think the right crowd is out here to bid on this stuff, so we'll see what happens. I don't really particularly need anything to finish out any vehicles. All my trucks are fairly complete. So this is a bit of an oddball. We've got the red yield sign, and we've got the tobacco fertilizer. Somebody that's a golf collector that has everything probably want to have that. Got the yellow stop sign. Somewhere in the 50s or 60s, they flip-flopped the colors on those to what we know today. I'm not sure the exact year. These three real, real early plates in the teens and early 20s, they actually didn't put the years. So you could see by the different design what years those were. 31's kind of neat because it's got the same matching 31 county letters. Just other random odds and ends from the era. So there is still one more row of vehicles that I haven't covered yet. Starting with this Chevy Nova. Cars obviously had a hard, hard life. Somebody's abandoned restoration project. They said it's got a 400 V8 in it, but who knows what condition. Somebody obviously started on this and then realized they were in over their heads and the parts got scattered to who knows where. Something like this, kind of take two, make one, take maybe three or four to make one. So this car probably just sell for the value of the parts that are here and that'd be probably about it at this point. Then we've got the late 40s, early 50s GMC truck. This thing's been sitting in the woods a while, growing a lot of moss. Parked in 62. Where were you in 62? Left to decay in the woods. It's a heavy old truck, but cab seems to be really pretty decent shape. GMC's maybe a spot below Chevy on the pecking order. Some people care about that, some people don't, but I think a Chevy probably has a little more collector value. Who knows what its fate will be. And down the row we've got a 
probably 71 or 72 Chevy. This is a truck that looks pretty decent. Probably shouldn't have been parted, but I mean, if a guy had a parts truck with a good frame laying around, realistically could be a truck again. Old dump truck body. Then we've got the Chevy Malibu. Believe this is 78. It's got the early style grill. Pretty complete intact car. Relatively untouched. Paints original. They just rolled her out of where she was sitting and into the sale line. Pretty straight, honest old car. This one, I see having a lot of potential. All the trim moldings, the bumpers. Unfortunately, somebody's punched the trunk lock, but I think that should straighten out. At least it's not ripped up and caved all the way in. Looks like somebody was kind of careless moving this thing with the door open and bent it, so that'll have to be addressed. But for a car four and a half decades old, it's been preserved pretty well. Inside, obvious Crumbling headliner, dirty carpet, sticky steering wheel. But really beyond that, the rest of what's here, pretty good potential to clean up okay. It looks like they yeah. just turned the key off there. Yeah, parked in 01. Let's go look at it. <laughs> I don't know, the crowd here is probably more like your... 67 to 72 gang, but there's gonna be This 65 here would be great yard art It's just totally original all weathered down Yep The old if she'll rock she'll run six-cylinder I got the Yosemite radio. <laughs> oh yeah. Hole saw edition. Three on the tree. It's not rusted too bad above the windshield. No. I mean, you can buy that whole floor for eight fifty. I just like the look of it. These old spark plugs still have a zinc plating on them, so they're not... Still got two of the original hubcaps in for... Too awful bad. <laughs> I don't want you in that one. Guess not. It. Both the vent windows are popped. Windshield's bad on the top. Yeah. Mismatch fenders, you'd have to spot them. <clears throat> A little questionable. signage yep nor nori block <laughs> this old 55 check out the passenger floor <laughs> yeah really yep That's a 
porcelain sign. It's a it? porcelain sign. Did you get that video? I did, yeah. Oh, Velvet, but they, they butchered it pretty good. That's like probably a third of it, maybe. Ford truck bench seat, 67 to 72. You gotta look to see if they put the rest of the sign behind the seat. Right. It's a factory automatic, though. Really? Yeah. Wow. Man, that is rare. Huh. That's cool. Look at the badges. Those have to. Oh happen. man. I missed that. Yeah. Automatic. Systematic. Hydromatic. They do have a skid loader here. What did you bring? Just a truck? I didn't even bring my trailer to my dad's house. Yeah. If I get some bought, I'll come back and get it later. What do you think, a thousand bucks? Probably. What would you really do with it? I mean, it's got the bottom plum rotted out of it. Yeah, but, but I can sell it to guys in Sweden. <laughs> Let them worry you about it. Four, four wheels on it to make it roll. Yeah. I think that steering might be loose, but... This old rusty thing, cab pounded down. The guy could scrub on that and probably... Yeah. It's still cool because the door signage. Yeah. Does this have any volume? Oh, bed rails? Yeah, those have sold for. Is it a bed rail or a roof? Yeah, they're bed rails. Yeah, but look, here's a piece of the truck. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's a whole roof rack. Some of those bed rails, they used like the factory rack parts. They always confuse me. Chrysler. Restore your Dodge Aspen station wagon back to factory. What's that? Dodge Aspen wagon, probably. Oh, off that roof? Yeah.